Hi, I'm Panos Kasambanis from the European Sting, live from European Business Summit 2014. And we are delighted here to invite Mr. Giuseppe Porcaro, Secretary General of the European Youth Forum. Hello, Giuseppe. Hi, hi. How are you doing? How do you see EBS this year? Well, it's, it's extremely interesting. A lot of uh, people, a lot of speakers. Uh, I think it's uh, in a crucial moment, just two weeks before the elections. So I think very interesting discussions. Um, so uh, thank you very much, Giuseppe, uh, for accepting to talking to us about European Youth. Uh, Giuseppe is working for European Youth Forum, uh, and uh, it's basically the most important uh, youth organization in Europe. Uh, we have prepared some questions for you on uh, youth education, employment, and unemployment also. Uh, and uh, first of all, but before we go to the questions, I would like uh, Giuseppe to ask you to tell us a few things about European Youth Forum because there are some people from our readers that uh, are not familiar with what you do, your scope, uh, and uh, the magnitude of your organization. Right. Well, as you say, the European Youth Forum is the platform of youth organizations in Europe. We represent uh, more than uh, uh, 98 members of the European uh, that are part of the, of the platform, both uh, uh, platforms themselves at national level as well as international movements of, uh, of young people. Uh, the interesting part is that uh, uh, we are striving for the rights of young people and we do that by bringing the voice of youth to the institutions. This is our core business. That's very well. Um, so let's come to the questions now, if you agree. Uh, the first one is on European education. So it goes like this. Do European students receive today quality education in Europe? Is good education affordable to every student in Europe, regardless of her economic power? And how does the European Youth Forum work to ensure quality and equal education for European students? Thanks a lot. This is uh, indeed a very important issue for the European Youth Forum, the issue of uh, education, but not just the issue of education, the issue of quality education. So you, you mentioned several different elements and several different dimensions of the problem. One is ensuring the quality in the curriculum, the, the quality in the relevance of the education that is uh, being taught. So uh, here we are strongly, for instance, uh, uh, looking at the relevance of, of the education regarding the kind of skills as well that the young people need in today's Europe. Yeah. And the kind of skills that they need not only as uh, future employees but also as future citizens. And from this point of view it is extremely important to look at an holistic approach towards education. So not only to what is happening in the, in the school system, in the university, but also the kind of education that happens outside the formal education system, meaning non-formal education. For us, this is extremely important. Uh, second element that you mentioned is the accessibility. Access to education, the issue of the fees. We saw that in some countries in Europe, these fees have been raising. We've been seeing students on the street that have been trying to, exactly, UK for instance, asking, uh, asking vehemently that uh, uh, the access to education should be... Uh, yeah. let's, let's, let's say, touch the example of UK. Do you believe that um, the British students have a power to change this? I mean, with these riots, um, do you think that they have a power or a say in the British educational system to maintain the fees at uh, normal and logic levels? Well, going in the street and uh, uh, showing that there is a critical mass, it's the first step, I mean, and this necessary step. I mean, uh, we know that uh, without students in the street in 1968, uh, things wouldn't have changed. But it's not enough, and there is also some uh, uh, dialogue with the political level. So the part on uh, uh, the mobilization, I would say, has to be complemented with a strong work at the political level. And this is something that uh, should be seen within the frame of, uh, of the UK political uh, 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 scenario arena at the moment. And uh, do you do you see that the European Youth Forum can actually help uh, the voices of the UK citizens, for example, because we have this example right now. But do you, do you see that the European Youth Forum can assist these voices to be heard inside in Brussels, and in what in, in what manner? Well, at the Youth Forum, we strongly support. Uh, 
the national members and in, in the UK our members the British Youth Council. We also don't interfere directly with national matters but we support the national let's say struggles by uh, seeing when they come, uh, start to become an European problem. So what we, what we do usually is to support any kind of pledge that uh, the British can, uh, can bring here in Brussels, for example. So this we can do, or support in terms of capacity the, the British Youth Council as is our members, but we don't go directly and intervene into an affair which is uh, a UK affair, you can understand uh, from this point of view. But we, for example, we are fighting or we are, we are asking uh, uh, more investment in education at the European level and we are asking for common policies that would ensure access, equal access to education. So from this point of view, I would say indirectly, we are trying to help the students not only in the UK but actually everywhere in Europe. Yeah. That's very good. So let's move on uh, to the next question. It's on um, employment and youth employment. Particularly, it's on European internships. Um, it goes like this. Does European youth have access to good quality internships today? And uh, how does European Youth Forum work to secure top quality internships for European youth? I'm going to say also the last sub-question. Uh, what is your opinion on the effectiveness of the Youth Guarantee Scheme? Right. Again, super relevant question when it comes to uh, the transition between the education to the labor market because we see, for instance, in general, internships as an important moment to guarantee such transition rather than uh, already uh, a full uh, pledged, uh, fledged job. So that, that's, that's extremely important to, uh, to see. And from there, we have our main core demand that internships are not going to be considered as an alternative to cheap labor, but they are actually a quality moment that is a learning moment in order to bring the young people in the labor market. Uh, to, to be concrete, uh, uh, it has been the European Youth Forum already a few years ago who together with a coalition uh, composed by uh, the trade unions, composed by the students' organizations, composed by uh, a, a quite large number of members of the European Parliament plus some national platforms uh, that uh, uh, are striving for, uh, for quality internships like Generation Precaire in France, uh, interns aware in the UK or Repubblica degli Stagisti in Italy, we put together all together a charter, a European charter on quality internships that exactly touches the points that you've been putting, putting forward. And with this charter that we actually invited also the business sector to join, even so we uh, never uh, managed to get Business Europe on board because they consistently refused to be on board on this charter. Uh, we advocated at the institutional level, so we got a process within the Commission, we got uh, at the end of, uh, of the last year the European Commission uh, setting up a, or coming out with a framework for um, quality trainerships and apprenticeships for instance which even if not satisfactory was coming from this initiative of the Charter. But also, and this is I think the most interesting part, we managed to bring on board, despite the uh, opposition of, of the traditional uh, business representation, we managed to pu uh, bring on board major corporations like Microsoft to sign the Charter on quality internships which proves that actually having quality internships is not only an advantage for the young people and one of their rights, but is actually also an advantage for the company that invests in the future of, uh, of skilled um, uh, young people that, that, that will eventually bring back this kind of investment in the company. So definitely uh, we are doing a lot on this and we are continuing to strive, we are enlarging, we are in dialogue with ADECO, we are in dialogue with the British Chamber of Commerce, we are in dialogue with many other actors in order to uh, uh, scale up this, uh, this process and not only at the institutional level but also at the business level. When it comes to the youth guarantee, when it comes to the youth guarantee things are a little bit more complicated because also uh, it's one of the requests that uh, at the Youth Forum we started to, to ask since 2010 to the institutions and we are very happy that uh, in the next, I mean the current multi-annual financial framework there has been a direct investment and clear indication 
about uh, setting up a youth guarantee scheme at the European level. However, what we've been always criticizing, there are two elements. One is the money allocation that the European Council has been uh, foreseen, because 7 billion euros for seven years, it's not enough. Eurofound uh, has been doing a study saying that there should be 21 billion for implementing, but our second Criti not critique, but uh, let's say we are we are watching on the implementation at the national level, is to ensure that actually the measure that will be adopted will not replicate measures of the past that didn't really uh, work, and then just repackage them to to get some kind of public financing, and then uh, and then uh, uh, call them youth guarantee. So we need to watch these two sides. It's not only a matter of money; it's also a matter of how things are going to be implemented very soon at at a local level. But I want to ask something about particularly the youth guarantee scheme. Do you see it working as some critics say that it works mainly as an extra incentive to companies? to hire young people for, let's say, unpaid positions or really low salaries, to do jobs that are not quality, so, I don't know, coffee jobs or uh, making photocopies. So, what, what is your feeling about the youth guarantee scheme? I mean, is it, in the end of the day, is it a fund, let's say, uh, addressed to SMEs? To, to get some more money with the excuse of hiring people? Or is it really, really tackling the issue of youth unemployment in Europe? What do you think? Very relevant uh, uh, observation from your side. But first of all, we need to look at what actually the, U the youth guarantee is. And sh or, or rather, what the U youth guarantee should be and what it cannot be. So it cannot be, I will start with what cannot be, it cannot be a measure to solve the issue of youth employment in Europe. First of all, because the issue of youth employment in Europe is also extremely linked to structural measures about the macroeconomic level and about uh, job creation in Europe. The youth guarantee is not tackling this issue. The youth guarantee is tackling the insertion uh, the, the reinsertion of, on the job market of young people that for four months they have not been in education or training or a job and therefore trying to requalify those young people in order to be equipped to be ready for the job market. But if the job market doesn't exist, then even the most brilliant youth guarantee cannot ensure a job for these young people. So looking at this point of view, then the youth guarantee should finance those measures that would allow these young people to, to get the correct and right skills to be then equipped for the job market. So if a company is using the money of the youth guarantee to finance coffee, coffee jobs, at the end of the day it doesn't fulfill the main goal of the youth guarantee because these are not the kind of skills that needs to be re do you think, qualified. I'm sorry for interrupting, but do you think there is any control over that? So how can you secure uh, these funds are allocated in their good purpose to really give the reasons to these people and uh, the, the, the curriculum they need to get back to the job market. Well, this is the whole point about uh, the monitoring of the Youth Guarantee Scheme and this is one of, of the other things that um, we have been at the European Youth Forum uh, from the beginning asking, that there should be strong, uh, uh, a strong system of monitoring yeah of how those funds are spent and how those funds are uh, planned to be spent. And for this, having a, a very important mechanism of governance of the youth guarantee that will not only include people from the, the, the ministries and the government, but also including the youth civil society that can act as a watchdog exactly for these kind of things not to happen. All right. So very well. Um, and now we go to the last question of this interview. Um, and it goes like this. So, European youth unemployment is raging in currently in Europe, reaching in some member states horrible figures up to 60% for young people below 25. So, how European Youth Forum feels about that? And what are the action undertaking to mobilize European policy to tackle this primordial issue fast and effectively? Yes, well, I think that the answers that I gave to the three 
first questions, they are all around that main topic. And I was mentioning it a little bit also for the youth guarantee reply when I say at the end of the day, what it counts is not only the specific measures on which we are working on, specific measure, namely uh, addressing the educational system to make it more fit for, with the needs, addressing uh, all the part of the transition between the labor market, uh, within the education and the labor market, and then addressing actually the dysfunctions that there are in the labor market itself. Notably important, uh, very important, the issue of the of contracts, for example, the issue of precarious contracts, the issue of the harmonization of the contracts among the European Union. This is a wall set of, of issues that remains un, un, unfulfilled because labor legislation is still very national and not European. So we are, we are asking for more Europe from this point of view also in labor legislation. And then in general rethinking a little bit how the future of, of, of European industry and the European uh, project would uh, fulfill the, the growth that, that is needed. And it's not just by repeating the same things that have been already written in the Europe 2020 strategy, for example, or uh, before the Lisbon strategy and so on, but really rethink the way this continent can uh, compete with the rest uh, and grow with the rest of the world, uh, build not only on the excellencies, but building also on the fact and on the need that the territories need still to produce something and not only focus on the excellence part. Uh, otherwise, we will have few parts of Europe that will grow and the rest of, of, of Europe that will, uh, will, will drop behind. And, uh, and that is very strongly felt at the European Youth Forum, that we should start this, this reflection not only on the specific measures, but also on the broader scheme. Now also, let's say another question based on the question I made on uh, unemployment that uh, reached really sad figures. Uh, no, mostly the, the south of Europe is suffering more from that. Uh, I want to know if you believe that in Europe as an idea or as a name, as a vision, it's impossible to try to have equal opportunities for you, young people all around the European Union. Well, as I said before, it, it comes together with the, the need to uh, have uh, an harmonious development of the continent, knowing also which are the challenges, but also being realistic with it. We know that uh, not every place in Europe can be a central place. We know that there is going always to be semi-periphery and periphery of the continent. However, within this kind of frame, uh, we can do uh, things that would allow the young people to access and having opportunities in the local communities where they live as well as if they want, and as I say, it's very important, only if they want, they can freely move and go around and, uh, and find other opportunities. But that these two options should be always uh, uh, foreseen and, and available for the young people. I don't accept those rhetoric of some politicians that says the only solution for the youth unemployment in Spain is to move all the young people unemployed to Germany. And this I even heard some uh, advertisements from the European Commission sometimes to, mo to, advertise, to advertise mobility programs, I think that this is the exact rhetoric that is unacceptable. Every person should have the right to live and grow at the country of origin, if he chooses to. I mean, and, and you, when you listen to this kind of uh, statements by really high uh, political personalities, even leaders of countries. This is the saddest thing exactly. for Europe, uh, according to me. I mean, there's no solution that European young people go to other markets to be more competitive and cheaper and cover the, their needs. What about the markets where the brightest minds are leaving and departing to go to Germany or to come to Belgium or to France? I mean, this is not the Europe we would like to have. All right, Giuseppe, uh, so thank you very much for this uh, comprehensive interview, short but I hope stimulating enough. Uh, we wish you a very nice EBS and we look forward for the next interview uh, in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.